coming out for everybody is a, a very personal thing and you can only do it when you're ready. And when you are ready, we're, we're here for you. Yeah. Hello, I'm Riyadh. Welcome to Standing Proud, the series where I talk to some incredible LGBTQ people about their lives, their journeys, shame, pride, and everything in between. Today, I have the pleasure to talk to the first rugby league player to ever come out while still playing in the game. It is the wonderful Keegan Hurst. Thank you. It Rapt is rapturous rugby league, applause. not rugby union. Yeah. Rugby league, you got it right, mate. Yeah, well done. You're, you're, so, with the you're, bat, you're right? so sporty, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the net. A lot of um, gay men uh, in particular go through the issue of trying to cloak their gayness, the femininity that lives inside of them, their interests that might be seen as stereotypically gay. Yeah. And um, that's a daily battle. Mm. And sometimes the battle is so strong that they can't really stay in the closet past 17 yeah, yeah. or even younger for you naturally you didn't really have that going on so that allowed you to stay living the sort of um cloaked secret life for longer yeah. was that a blessing or a curse well i suppose that's a very good question it was a, a, a bit of a double-edged sword really mm. do, do you know what I, I look back at photos of me as a kid and i was you know it was shining out of me if my mum you can it, see it. If my, yeah, if my mum. In would, what way? I mean, I'm on every other photo. I'm clutching my pearls like this, and, <laughs> and there's no pearls there. <laughs> there's no pearls there. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I think at every school play, I somehow ended up in drag. Um, I'm not saying that every gay man ends up in drag, but no, it was. It, I was. All the videos of me are very um, au fait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with that came uh, oh well. Gay men don't look like how I how I look. Certainly not gay men that are on the TV, and mm. you know you, you know as well as I do, and we talk about it a lot about representation. How important it is for everybody. Mm. You know, you want to see people in doing well, people being successful who look like you. You can relate to whether they sound like you, look like you, act like you. Um, so you know, for me growing up, Elton John was gay. George Michael was gay, Freddie Mercury was gay, and I, you know, didn't have a moustache. I, I wasn't knocking out tunes on a piano with massive sunglasses on, um, <laughs> as much as I would love to be yeah. able to do that. Um, so it was like, oh, well, I, I can't be gay. I, I suppose I kind of told myself, well, if that's gay, then I'm not gay because I look like this and I am like this and I come from this place and this isn't very fabulous. So although you were having same-sex attraction, I presume, the fact that you didn't align visually with the gay people that you knew, probably three in the world that you knew of, yeah. you thought, well, I must not be. It this must is be a something phase? Else. This is a phase, or everybody's talking about, everybody's feeling this, but we're not talking about it. Um, I'll grow out of it. Um, this is just not the dumb thing. Right. Um, what did you think would happen if the, the, the secret got out? What was the... Because we all catastrophize in that place, yeah, don't we? Yeah, well, I think, you know, as a t hindsight's a wonderful thing, right? So as, I think looking back as a teenager, I, I just genuinely didn't know what was going on. Like, I was like, okay, I'll get a girlfriend because everybody else has got a girlfriend. I don't, I kind of fancy him though, but okay, I'll go along with it. I'll go, I'll get a girlfriend. She's, she's sweet. Um, we'll go to the cinema. Yeah, all right, I'll kiss her. All right. Um, and then, uh oh, she's pregnant. Oh yeah, I don't want to see her. Because that, that happened, that did, didn't it? That did happen. Yeah, <laughs> um, not at school. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that that did happen. So it it wasn't until you know late teens, and then obviously once I ended up with a kid and in this life where from the outside everyone would have thought well, you've kind of got it all. You got a budding rugby career. You you know you're six foot four. You uh, you, you've got a, a missus, a kid, like you've got a nice setup. And really, I was going, this is this is not the life that I wanted. I'm this is not me. You were 20 when you had Taylor, is that right? Taylor was born when I was 20, yeah. So 19 when she, wow. when um, Sarah was pregnant. So I was like, this is not what I expected my life would be. When you realised that you were different, gay, whatever it was, maybe you didn't call it gay at the time. Internally, you yeah. knew. And, and when you came out, what was that gap? How many years was that? The realisation and the, the telling everyone about it? I mean, I think, if we're being honest, the realisation was probably when I was about 13, okay. you know, 14 years. 
I call those years, for me, they were four years, so a lot shorter than you, but I call them the PCO, pre-coming out right. years. Um, and generally, they tend to be the hardest years for any closeted person yeah, because yeah. you're kind of living a double life. A master of disguise, a chameleon, trying to be what other people need you to be. Yeah. Um, what were those 14 years like and how did you survive them? How I got through it was keeping busy, mm. I think. I had rugby on the go. Uh, rugby at the time was part-time. Um, so I had a job. I had two kids. We'd bought a house that I was, you know, renovating. So my head and, and my hands were literally full. Um, and it was kind of only on the the down points, the, the lulls in activity where you, you know, and everyone's experienced this during lockdown where you're actually alone with your thoughts and you go, this is not where I want to be. And, and that was when it kind of spiraled and that was when it got to the point where my mental health was really bad, where I was like, I can't do this. Did other people pick up on that struggle or were you still able to hide that? I, I think when I was struggling like that, I just turned to some form of escapism, whether it was drinking, whether it was drugs, whether it was training more. I mean, l literally anything and everything, more work. So there was, so there was always, I suppose, like you said, being a master of disguise, I was always kind of putting something there where people could go, oh, well, that's why that's happening. Mm. There was always something else. Uh, and as you said, I, I don't think anyone was going, oh, well, maybe Keegan's gay. That's why he's struggling with it. When you decided uh, enough is enough, I've, I've got to, I, I can't live like this anymore. What was the first thing that you did? Not long after Taylor was born, there was a point where I was like, I can't live like this and I couldn't see a way out. Um, and that, that was like the first time that I thought about suicide. Wow. And I thought, I can't do this. I can't be this person. I can't live like this. But again, it was that thing of, put up and shut up, you've got a kid, you know, don't be, don't be selfish, don't be irresponsible. So I kind of just dug my heels in and again, you know, out of the frying pan into the fire, that was when we got married, that was when we had another kid. Um, and then again, it came to a head and I remember thinking, yeah, I can't do this. And I remember planning it all out. I was going to get in the car, I was going to get a hose pipe, I was going to drive off, oh, someone, someone would find me. That was, that, that was what I was going to do. And right. I was just really pragmatic about it. I'll go to a car park, so that, uh, like a retail park, so someone who goes there early will find me. It won't be my family who find me. Uh, you know, it was, it was kind of planned out. It wasn't emotional in the sense of, am I going to do this? Like, I wasn't a quivering wreck. Mm. Um, and then it got to the point where it was getting, you know, I was going to do it, and I, and I thought, the, the, kids will, the kids would never know why I did it. Sarah would never know why I did it. They'd think it was something to do with them. And really, you know, all they'd ever done was put up with me, you know, when I did go off drinking and, you know, I, I, I wasn't a nice person. To, I, I didn't like myself. Mm. You know, if you don't love yourself, how can you love somebody else and all that? You talking about it really, really, I think, helps a lot of people. I think it, it, I think it is important to talk about it and it's not to trivialise it or to downplay it. It's to just say that it's why interviews like this, it's why pride, it's why awareness and representation and all these things are so important so that people don't have to go through that. I just want to say thank you for being no, so open about that because no. I know it's, it's not easy. Coming out for everybody is a, a very personal thing and you can only do it when you're ready and you're kind of opening yourself up to potential criticism, which is why we don't come out, about something we fundamentally can't change about ourselves. Yeah. I think all you can do is keep doing what people are doing as in when you are ready, we're, we're here for you. Yeah. You come out into the world, here I am, and you find out that actually there's a lot of stuff that I don't know about my people, my community. Yeah. And I, I guess one of the most unlikely people came along and said, I'll teach you, and that was Anthony Cotton. Yeah, so there was a bit of a gap between me coming out and then it being public, you know, and coming out in the papers couple of months so then when it came out it was like a, it ended up being a front page story and like I got so many messages from people and then famouses 
and I, you know, I was on Twitter and my following went <laughs> um, Emma Watson DM'd me, I had a phone call from Elton John, I had an email mm. from um, Ian McKellen and then Anthony DM'd me and he was very sweet and like you said there was a lot of opportunists in there There was, and, and, and I picked up on that straight away, that there was a sense of um, I'll do something for you but I want something from you um, it, that, that was just something that I innately picked up on and where Anthony came in and he just said I know you kind of don't know me um, it's really good what you've done I know you don't know me and I know that this is not your world and you're going to have loads of people messaging you and lots going on um, but if you need any help with it or you need a friend I don't want anything from you I just want you to know that it, you, there's oh. a helping hand there um, and Proper I was like decent. I was like didn't have the gay one off Coronation Street. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony became a really good friend, and he gave me he gave me what I call my education. You know, I, I I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about Stonewall. I didn't know about the the riots. I didn't know about Pride, what it was. I didn't know about Section Twenty Eight. Mm. I didn't know any of that. Um, and I also didn't have any idea about gay culture, um, gay music. Well, I did, but I didn't know that I knew. And Anthony sent me he, he sent me a. a a, a care package he called it his his education care package it was dvds um he said queer as folk because i'm in it um <laughs> he sent there was milk angels in america paris is burning um in bed with madonna amazing i was i was being asked to you know do stuff like this and yeah. talk about stuff and, and I, I i wouldn't want to sit there and talk about something that i wasn't educated about and i also wouldn't want to i know nobody wants to be represented but I also wouldn't want to talk about people who are like me about our history yeah. and not know about it. Since coming out, have you been able to see that there is sort of a, a whole rainbow of people out there in our community that kind of need to be lifted up as well? And, and, and how has that uh, changed your perception of, of the community? Absolutely. I, and, and, you know, I, I say to my boyfriend, and we've spoken about it before, and I said, you know, we're, we're actually really lucky, like we're <laughs> tall, white, gay men. Like we're all right mm. of the minority, we're kind of top of the okay pile, and there are a lot of people who who aren't, you know, and that's why, you know, talking about trans issues, fem shaming, mm. and racism within the community, mm. and all that kind of stuff is 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 really important to to talk about. It's really important to be aware of, and it's really important to call it out as well. Um, so yeah, I, absolutely, I've realised that I've I am now privileged within a, a group and I think when you're aware of that you can kind of you know help other people who are as privileged. You said before that when you were in your worst place you would have taken a pill if it would make you straight. What would you say to that guy in that place now? Don't take it because when you get through the other side which I would like to say that I am I know, like we've said I've not got it all figured out but you know life is yeah you know we are different and there is that to deal with and that adds an extra layer of things and there's all the shame around it and you can look at all the negative stuff but look at all the all the joy that that there is as well in the community that we have when we see other people winning when we you know pride when you see someone being successful when you see two 16 year old boys walking down the street holding hands you know you get uh, th that genuinely gives me joy and I'm, I'm really proud you know I have always said I function better in a team mm -hmm. you know that's why I didn't be playing a solo sport um, and you know I do feel like I'm part of a team I'm part of a community and part of a tribe and and we all want to feel like we belong right and I think that's um, I think that's a really important part certainly for me of, of being a, a human being beautiful thank you for coming and talking to me no no thank cheers, you cheers Keegan me. no thank you